a 1,700 mile crack across the United States discovered by scientists. And here's what you need to know. It comes from, you can see right there, basically from the west, Vancouver Island, and a lot of geologists uh, basically think of Vancouver Island because it moves so much like a giant ship. So that crack comes from there, goes all the way across the United States, and uh, ends up in the area of the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Now, uh, across the Great Lakes, a lot of people don't know that, but that horseshoe-shaped thing is basically a mantle plume that's been there for a billion years. So the Great Lakes have magma underneath. And that uh, western uh, little arc of it goes into uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and then swings west into um, Arizona and Nevada. And you'll see there on that crack basically is uh, the Yellowstone supervolcano. Now, is America at risk for a greater earthquake spanning across the United States? Cracks across America in the rift zones may conceal large fracture type faults where scientists may not be able to identify where these hidden fractures may unleash catastrophic earthquakes. In November 1981, a study was published that rocked the scientific world that sparked concern in FEMA circles in which a 1,700 mile crack across America was discovered and worse yet, this crack cut through the New Madrid seismic zone, where, where in 1811 and 1812, and you can see on the map the uh, great quakes of 1811-1812 were right, right in the New Madrid seismic zone, which is basically a rift valley. So those great earthquakes, 1811-1812, three giant earthquakes, devastatingly struck the center of America. Scientists have been struggling since then to answer the question, of uh, what risk this mega feature may pose to our heartland today. And recently, and less known, is a study from an independent geologic research set of work that has identified a possible second crack through America that crosses into and through the same volatile New Madrid seismic zone. The original 1,700 mile crack across America was found using modern day gravity mapping satellite data and using computers to process the measurements. In 1981, Dr. Raymond E. R. Vinson of West Washington University in St. Louis used data, to press, uh, data processing techniques where 600,000 discrete gravity measurements from 20 years of scientific data gathering to synthesize a map. The results revealed an astonishing ancient rift in the North America crust that extended some 1,700 miles from Idaho to the Southern Appalachian Mountains. New discoveries from more recent research has extended this crack anomaly in where it combines with a mega shear zone to the middle of Washington state and possibly with the Olympic Wallowa uh, lineament, or OWL for short, which reaches to the Pacific Ocean near Port Angeles, Washington. Thus, the total length may uh, totally be near 2,200 miles. This ancient rift, estimated to be a billion years old, was dubbed the Missouri Gravity Low in the easternmost section of the crack across America. Another rift 60 miles by 30 miles under the Mississippi River Valley, called the Real Foot Rift, was found to cross through the Missouri Gravity Low and head to the northeast-southwest. These two rift zones intersect at the New Madrid seismic zone. Over 4,000 small earthquakes have been mapped within these intersecting rift regions since 1974. Now, the maverick geologist Jack Reed performed a study in mapping the frequency and location of larger magnitude earthquakes trending along the northeast trending lineament of the real foot rift the resulting data indicated another concerning revelation that a possible second crack through America connects the real foot rift with the St. Lawrence Rift Zone in Canada. Now, we know that uh, in Geology 101, which I took in Queens College, New York, 
the first thing you learn about rivers is that they're fault lines. So that black line uh, showing you the Quebec Charlevoix quake, the, the St. Lawrence River going into Lake Erie, uh, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, where we have that mid-continental rift, MCR, that mantle plume, the black line going all the way through New Madrid seismic zone, and of course the uh, Mississippi River, that basically doesn't take that much, maybe a couple of million years, and they say that that eastern part of the United States, North America, will uh, slough off into a separate landmass. So the um, okay, where did where did I leave this? The Real Foot Rift Zone. We're talking about the um, Saint Lawrence River. Just as the New Madrid seismic zone revealed its active potential in its rift zones, magnitude 7.9 earthquake in 1663, struck near Charlevoix in Quebec and revealed its power in the St. Lawrence rift zone. Perhaps a, a particular uh, partial clue to what may link to the existence of the nature of the crack across America and the crack through America is a mid-continental rift system. Research has identified that a movement direction of MCR, mid-continental rift, from tremendous interplate pressure, forced a southern expansion of this large rift where the southern edge transversed directly towards the New Madrid seismic zone. The mid-continental rift thus forms a horseshoe that straddles and reaches by its tips at or near the two major crack alignments, lineaments, Intraplate pressure could be intensified into these intersecting lineaments, including the resulting pressures at the New Madrid seismic zone. What can make these 70 to 90 mile wide and thousands of mile long low gravity crack lineaments feature so dangerous in their hidden fractures buried in the, earth, the Earth's crust below? These low gravity areas are called rift zones. We know that of the Great Rift Valley in Africa, right? Rift zones where the continental crust tried to pull itself apart but failed. The thinning of the crust enabled lighter density young rock to intrude, thus resulting in the lower gravity characteristics in the rift zones. Other recent studies have suggested that the thinning of the crust may occur from the delamination of heavier crustal rock falling down into the Earth's mantle. However, in the case of linear features, of these long distance lineament rift zones, the case of random delamination from falling into the mantle would not be able to explain these highly organized structures. What is known is that these linear rift zones have exhibited the ability to unleash very large earthquakes, and this has been aptly demonstrated by the three 1811 to 1812 New Madrid magnitude 7, magnitude 8 earthquakes and the large 1663 magnitude 7.9 Charlevoix earthquake in Quebec. Since the regularity of such earthquakes are measured in centuries, scientists are unable to identify if any section of these linear rift zones may be at risk of a sudden large earthquake. The bigger the length and the depth of a buried fracture and its subsequent pressure induced release, the greater the chances of this rupture to unleash a giant earthquake. Indeed, the three 1811 to 1812 magnitude 7 to 8 earthquakes had ruptured release areas comparable to any single biggest locked segment of the San Andreas California fault region could do. Except in the New Madrid quakes, it did it all in the same location, and each huge quake spaced only a month apart. With thousands of miles of possible buried fractures within these lineaments, it's possible that changes in intraplate pressure may well may may all uh, may be all this is uh, that is necessary to activate a segment. Another unanswered question is if Yellowstone supervolcano is susceptible or interactive with this lineament. Indeed, in 2002, geologists observed distant triggering of earthquake swarming at Yellowstone from the 7.9 Denali, Alaska earthquake, 7.9 magnitude Denali, Alaska earthquake in 2002. As the Denali earthquake was 2,000 miles away, 
What would happen if a large earthquake within a rift zone lineament was much closer to Yellowstone? Certainly, it would be useful to know if there were any susceptible buried fractures in the nearby lineament that traverses near Yellowstone supervolcano. However, scientists are placed at a disadvantage in earthquake risk assessment since any hidden fractures are buried deep in what is called the mid-continental basement without having any data to the size, length, and number of any hidden fractures, it renders any risk analysis blind. Only a paleogeologic assessment of past locations, patterns, frequency, and magnitude of earthquakes are scientists able to form a type of risk assessment. Compound, compounding any risk assessment is understanding the rupture process of these hidden fractures. Scientists refer to these as interplate earthquakes as the quake occurs within the interior of the tectonic plate. Pressure within the, the buried fracture, the fault that is, may instigate an earthquake. GPS, strain sensors, and even SAR, interferometric synthetic aperture radar, are of no use to proffering answers to these questions as these fractures are inaccessible since they are deep below, while the sediment or crust above hides any telltale sign of crustal creep or stress. Because of the risk assessment uncertainty, FEMA and other agency, emergency agencies are left to estimating the risk to America's infrastructure based on a worst-case paleologic history, hence the maximum at any moment. Indeed, in 1999, FEMA listed as one of the major top four hazards in the United States as catastrophic would be a giant earthquake striking the central United States. Because scientists are unable to predict the timing or the location of the next large earthquake in these rift zones, there is a difference of viewpoints regarding cost trade-offs of implementation and or upgrades of rigorous seismic building codes between the scientific community and the emergency management organizations. Complicating this situation is that earthquakes that occur in the central or eastern United States affect much larger areas and similar magnitudes in the western United States. The FEMA guide references that in 1906, magnitude 7.8 San Francisco earthquake was felt 350 miles away in the middle of Nevada. In contrast, the 1811 New Madrid earthquake was reported to have rung church bells in Boston. Massachusetts, a thousand miles away. Differences in the geologic makeup of the Earth's crust east and west of the Rocky Mountains are noted to be the cause of this stronger conduction of the earthquakes, P waves and S waves, creating the distant shaking contrast. As the rate of earthquakes have been increasing in the New Madrid seismic zone and in other parts of central United States, such as Oklahoma, there are concerns that interplate tectonic pressures may be driving these trends. Other areas, such as the Wabash Valley and East Tennessee seismic zones, also produce earthquakes on a regular basis. Quoting from the CUSCC, depending on earthquake magnitude and location, each of these zones could impact multiple states, causing major physical, social, and economic disruption in a region that is home to more than 40 million people. On April 18, 2008, a magnitude 5.8 earthquake struck near Mount Carmel, Illinois. This relatively minor earthquake was felt in 28 states and Canada and was responsible for an estimated $3 million in non-structural damages and damaged at least 240 structures in Illinois alone. The Mount Carmel earthquake shows the widespread impact a larger earthquake might have on the region. Scientists now believe the eastern United States could have a major quake of its own, and events like the New Madrid Great Quakes may happen again, but there is no way to guess where or when. And this is uh, by catholic.org on Bedded Reality. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support. Support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.